Tiger 53. <laughs> I thought I'd seen one. Oh, that looks good. Uh, the tonsils. The tonsils are organs of the immune system. Now, we were looking at the lymph nodes last week, which are organs of the immune system. So if you look at the tonsils under the microscope, uh, we should see some very similar structures. But tonsils are interesting because they're in, the, they're in the throat, they're in the pharynx, so they are defending this entrance way to the body. And people commonly get tonsillitis and tonsillar stones. So if we look at the structure of the tonsils under the microscope, will we see those features uh, that make those problems more likely? Oh, I have been writing so many exam questions. It's nice to actually sit down and look at some biology. Uh, okay, well, actually, I think we might be able to see some of the main features of the tonsils there that cause those problems. We can see a crypt. Can you see that infolding? So there's some darker staining tissue and some redder staining tissue uh, <laughs> department of histology <laughs> i wonder uh, which department of histology that was because uh, we haven't got one now i don't know where this has come from okay what do we see uh so the tonsils shouldn't take us very long to to look at uh, yeah. oh yeah okay Okay. Um, oh no, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, no, we have got what I want. We've got what I want. Okay, so we've got, um, we got a few folds. Which of those streaks in there? Um, the tonsils are inside the throat, so the mucosal lining of everything in there that's going to be a stratified squamous epithelium that's not keratinized unlike the epithelium out here that is keratinized um, so stratified squamous epithelium stratified means there's multiple layers uh, squamous means the cells are flat the stratified nature the multiple layers of cells is what we'd expect to see here because of course you're eating and drinking your wearing away the top surface of this epithelium so there are already always new cells underneath ready to come through. So we're going to see a stratified squamous epithelium and then if we go so this darker staining stuff here oh you can see the marks made by the uh, the blade there. Um, so I'm on my lowest objective lens here this is a four times lens and ten times to my eyes so 40 times magnification. Uh, what we're seeing there is hopefully something that looks very similar if you've looked at um, the histology of other immune tissues. We're looking at a lymphoid follicle or a lymphoid nodule. We're looking at lots of lymphocytes in here. And then there is, so if we've got an epithelium on one side of um, the tonsil. Oh look, we've got some glandular tissue in there which is kind of the nature of where the tonsil is next to um, so we can ignore that um, but as we okay so if we can um, yeah probably so on the other side of the tonsil we've got a bit of uh, we've got connective tissue we've got a uh, a bit of a capsule around the, the back of the tonsil so there's, there's the tonsil is partly encapsulated and then partly covered by epithelium. Okay then, right, so um, let's go up to the surface. Like I say, that's, that's glandular tissue associated with the mucosa, you know, at the back of the pharynx. Um, we're not really interested in that. Let's go, yeah, let's go up here, jump up to so there's my 10 times magnification. Um, yeah, very interesting. So here, I can probably go up to my 20 times magnification, right? So 
So here is the epithelium uh, covering the tonsil. So if the job of the tonsil, if the tonsil is lymphoid tissue, if it's cells of the immune system placed at various spots um, around this entranceway to the body, um, the, the lymphocytes are there. So we've got lymphocytes, antigen present presenting cells and macrophages and other bits and bobs. Basically, the cells of the immune system are in a position where they can recognize pathogens that are entering the body, microorganisms that are going to cause trouble, and can mount an immune response and get rid of those infecting organisms before they cause a problem. So can you see, as we're going around here, this is quite interesting. So um, up there, we've got clearly... Uh, a nice multi-layered epithelium. So that's our stratified squamous epithelium. You can see as how we get to the as we get to the surface, those cells get flatter. But on this side here, we've got many many cells, and most of them are dark staining and round. So that's the nucleus that we're really seeing there. Um, so we're seeing lots of that's that's classic lymphocyte, right? We're seeing lots of lymphocytes, and as I slide around. We can see that epithelium doesn't quite look the same. It looks a lot thinner now. And uh, we're seeing those lymphocytes pushing in there. This is, a, this is a classic thing with the tonsils in that you've got that epithelium, but the lymph lymphocytes will infiltrate the epithelium. They'll get into the epithelium because, of course, their job is to recognize the bad things in the oral cavity in the, in the pharynx that you want to get rid of. Or as we go around there, it gets a bit thicker again. So that's what we're seeing there. Um, okay, let's have a look at a, um, a nodule. We, um, it's tricky to focus this on the lowest objective. So that there is a lymphoid nodule. That is filled with largely B lymphocytes. It's paler in the center where we have a germinal center where some of those lymphocytes are differentiating and becoming other cells, like plasma cells, that are going to move off to other places. And we'll also see um, macrophages if we look in there. So basically, we've got lots and lots of nodules all packed together underneath the epithelium. Now, what we're seeing there is we're seeing a tonsillar crypt. So if the, if the surface, really, if the pharynx is out here, that's the surface, We've got these crypts that go all the way around and into the tonsil. And these crypts, so there can be 15 to 20 of these crypts extending into the tonsil. Um, so what they do is they are um, well improving, they're increasing the amount of surface area. They're increasing the chances of lymphocytes in those lymphoid follicles encountering um, invading pathogens. So in there we would see cellular debris and pathogens and um, lymphocytes and all sorts of bits and bobs. And we can see a bit. We can see some stuff there. We can see some infiltrate, right? Is that... What are we looking at there? So look, we've got... Can you see how we've got immune cells on one side? We've got that epithelium now that's looking pretty thin that has been infiltrated by lymphocytes. And then in the lumen there, we're seeing debris, we're seeing stuff. That's the tonsil doing its job. Um, so those tonsillar crypts are great because they give more surface area. They let um, debris, pathogens, bits and bobs, stuff that goes into your, into your oral cavity, your nasal cavity, into the deep parts of the tonsil, the lymphocytes can have at all that and uh, help fight the infection. But can you imagine then how if these crypts become infected, become inflamed, that then is tonsillitis, that's quite painful. And this is where you'll see lots of bacteria uh, and uh, cells fighting those bacteria get stuck in there, there'll be pus. Uh, that th These crypts are the cause of tonsillitis, is what I'm trying to say, not too eloquently. Also, um, the debris that collects in these crypts can become calcified, and these are tonsillar stones that can be uncomfortable. 
they can actually be dislodged just through normal use, day-to-day -day activities, uh, or they can be poked out. Uh, but sometimes they can be very uncomfortable, might need um, some clinical care to be removed. But yeah, tonsillar crypts are a feature of the tonsils. This is what's making the tonsil different from, say, a lymph node. There's So with a lymph node, we have lymphatic fluid passing in and passing out. Tonsils aren't like that. This is mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. These are lymphoid nodules placed against the epithelium of an entranceway to the body. They're guarding against that entranceway to the body to stop infections getting into the upper airway. Um, so the other thing to look for are just um, the extensions of the capsule, which make the trabeculae, which support the... Um, support the structure here and we're maybe seeing a bit of that with that yellow staining um, the uh, the connective tissue the capsule is kind of staining yellow um, looks like we've got a bit of muscle there of the uh, the pharyngeal wall and we can see that yellow extending in and surrounding the the, uh, the lymphoid follicles. So those are just the trabeculae, that's all. And that's it for the anatomy of the, uh, the tonsil. Um, lots and lots of lymphoid nodules, uh, partially encapsulated, trabeculae extending in, many crypts, all lined by a stratified squamous epithelium. Um, and this is your tonsil. Um, now, tonsillitis, and repeated tonsillitis, repeated infection of the tonsils, can be very painful and very uncomfortable. So back when I was a kid, um, it was common, if you had repeated bouts of tonsillitis, to have your tonsils removed. Um, that is less the case nowadays because it is recognised that tonsils are useful later in life. Um, there's a good nodule with lots of... Uh, paler cells in there, so I'm guessing most of those will be uh, lots of uh, macrophages surrounded by B lymphocytes in the nodule. Uh, slide up to the epithelium, let's see if we can find a good patch. Um, so yeah, nowadays um, there are still criteria uh, where the tonsils can be recommended for removal, but it's generally considered that tonsils are very useful. They reduce the risk of developing upper respiratory tract infections. If you think about flus and colds and COVIDs and that sort of thing, very useful to have your immune system monitoring this area. And if part of that immune system is being removed, well, you're more likely for that infection to take hold. So I think it also probably reduces the, the severity of an infection. Um, I'm thinking anecdotally rather than evidence-based. But uh, we could look that up, couldn't we, on PubMed? Anyway, there we go. That's the histology of the tonsil. Very similar to the lymph node, but it's not about passing lymphatic fluid through it. It's covered in epithelium, so the lymphoid nodules are monitoring what's going in here and can amount to an immune response. And it's the crypts that cause the trouble. Okay. See you next week.